Son of Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. Weeds Gone Wild and Wisdom from the Bible. During our first segment, we're going to tell you how to successfully stop weeds motivated by this ancient principle. If you love your daylilies as much as I do, you want more. You can double, even triple what you have now by dividing them. Hear how in our second segment. Julie and I were talking, and it seems mosquitoes have been more aggressive than ever. We're going to discuss what you can do in our third segment. How are your roses looking? Fall is the second spring, and with a little maintenance, your roses will look incredible this fall. We'll tell you what to do during our fourth segment. What's bugging you? Grease ants. Oh, my God. They're <laughs> true. They're driving me insane. Uh, I think I have conquered them, and I'll share that in our final segment, How You Can Too. So stay tuned. We'll be right back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com and we'll see you in the garden. Do you think you have insects eating away your nice, beautiful lawn? Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below is the product for you. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below not only controls chinch bugs, which is a surface-feeding insect, but also controls grubs, which is a subsurface-feeding insect. It does it all, guaranteed. When most homeowners see their lawn turning brown in the summer, they think grubs. Damage from the larva, Japanese beetle. But in many cases, it could be chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are hard to see because they are so small and you'd need to get down on your hands and knees to see them. If you misdiagnose your problem, Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below has you covered. The product will control both chinch bugs and grubs. This summer, control your pest problems with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. It also may be used in flower beds on landscape ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below will also control crane fly larvae, ants, mole crickets, sod webworms, bill bugs, and many more. Your property will be pest free with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. So, next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below and expect to have the best looking lawn and landscape in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers' YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 1540 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. So a very ancient biblical principle. And Matthew 13, 8 through 9 says this. Seed fell on good soil. It produced a crop 160 or 30 times more than what was planted. Those who have ears should listen and understand. Yeah, well, that's me. <laughs> that's you. <Yeah. laughs> Weed, weeds right now. I mean, oh. it was against, this was not necessarily against weeds, but the profit, oh. the, the actual information is from plant and this happens right now weeds are pregnant oh my gosh maturing seed heads on plants have hundreds of seeds and that each seed bomb you know each Uh plant is going to create so you have a hundred more so you have one that's creating a hundred or more and then you have that seed that falls and germinates that's creating a hundred more of you know, yeah. that's why there's such a fight in your lawn with crabgrass. But now, like Johnson grass and some of the weeds that, that form in the sidewalk cracks, oh, I, I know that I have weeds at home 
that I have to deal with. And I have crabgrass that is really creeping into landscape beds. I need to control that. Yeah. Yeah. At Bloomers, at the store, where we have a, uh, say, a seam where side where um, the driveway meets another section, there are weeds that are growing. And what happens, and, and Hula, you've seen this. Oh, yeah. It's like the weeds, like, push out. They want to the concrete yeah. or they push out right. the the sidewall cracks and, or the driveway and it can split apart pavement over time. So if you don't control those weeds, all have. of a sudden you've got crumbly, you know, a crumbly, crumbly concrete pavement. or a crumbly yeah, uh, blacktop. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, how, how is your yard? You've uh, been distracted. I had lately. I had a garden bed. That was, yeah, I know I have been <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, anyway. I had a garden bed this spring. Yeah, and it's all weeds. It's all weeds. Yeah, it's about three foot tall. <laughs> well, you're growing a nice crop then. Oh yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so you'll have an abundant, abundant harvest. Of, oh yeah. <laughs> and see, that's over. the problem is that if you don't get the weeds before they go to seed head or before they drop their seed. You know, you have to get them now. You can't wait. Uh, We've talked about this principle before and that the fact that weeds want to create fruit. And then instead of being a tomato, they've got hundreds of seeds to reproduce. Mm -hmm. You know, another biblical prophecy, right? (laughs) You know, (laughs) it's it's that they will take over. Oh, completely. Absolutely. So what do you do? What are you going to do? If you have weeds out there and you see the the little foxtail that's growing on some, or you can see like where it's, no, those aren't leaves. Those are little, you know, looks like little dots. Those are seeds waiting to burst through and create basically more maintenance, more problems than you have right now. A hundred to, you know, anywhere 160 or 30 times what you have now. So let's talk about it. Well, they're pulling weeds. Oh yeah, <laughs> is a gr- is a is. great way to get some exercise. Mm-hmm. It also is a great way to to make sure you're getting the weeds, and you have to get them out by the roots. Oh yeah, completely. That's right, and because if you don't get them out and kill the all the way down to the root, oh. you're just wasting your time oh, because yeah. they're just going to grow back. Oh, yeah. uh, maybe you cut the seed heads off. It uh, again, that's not. That's not what we're looking to do. We're looking to kill the weeds, keep the grass, kill the weeds that are in areas. And and my professor in in college, (laughs) he used to say, you know, the description of a weed is a plant in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. So a tomato plant could actually be a weed. You know, it's there's a like we get them all the time where where all of a sudden you've got, uh, say, an ornamental plant. Uh, say right now, I have uh, morning glories. Oh, yeah. They're a weed right now because they're growing in the wrong spot. Uh, there's uh, types of blackberries that will, you know, birds will eat and then they'll go and they'll poop them out. And then all of a sudden they're in that nice little capsulated thing to grow tr- another another crop. And it's the same thing. That's a weed. That's a weed. Um, I can't, I've told you on this show how much I hate mulberries because they become weeds and they become trees and then they become an issue where you have to cut them down with a chainsaw. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows the issues with spotted lanternfly. Their host plant is tree of heaven. Yeah. That's a weed. weed. Yeah. So again, you need to decide how you're going to do it. And if you're pulling them out by hand, you need to get them out by the, by the root. Back on the farm... Uh, we used to hoe the fields by hand. Um, we had tractors that would cultivate, but in between the plants, we would have to hoe. That's a tough job. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, it wasn't the best job on the farm. Um, maybe another reason why I hate tomatoes. But anyway, <laughs> that what you have to do is you have to get that root out. If you're if you are a hoer and you have a garden and and you don't want to bend over and pick those weeds out. What you have to do is hoe, and a hoe is a, I guess, a small rectangle on the end of, of a uh, a wooden stick. We, we call them stick tools, but it's because it's actually, you know, it has a handle, like a shovel, like a long-handled shovel. 
but you don't, like a lot of people do it like they're chopping wood. Mm. How about you, Julio? Do you, do you ever use a hoe? Yeah, I used a hoe. Yeah. Okay. The trick to being successful and getting the root out when you're hoeing in your garden is not to chop it chop like it it's out. wood, yeah. but you go in and you use that corner on an angle and then that gets it into the soil. And then you pull yeah. and you pull out that weed and you yeah. get that root out. Yeah. Not like, you know, you know, your Abraham Lincoln yeah. chopping yeah. logs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to go with that angle mm-hmm. and get that point in first and then pull. And then you just go ahead farther and farther and you loosen that soil. You pull big weeds out. Um, it, there's an art to it. There's an art to it. My daughter calls uh, the hoe, my daughter calls it a rounded spatula. A rounded, rounded spatula. Yeah, because it's got a hook on it. I said, is it like because it's a hook at the bottom of the where, stick? Where, where's, where's there a hook on a, on a hoe? At the bottom of the stick. You get towards where it goes to the perpendicular point. There is a hook. There's a hook that goes right to the flat point of the hoe. I've never seen that one. Yeah. Mine's flat. Yeah, mine's mine's is. It's a metal. It's a straight yep. metal piece. I'm trying to figure out the as where it. It's like is that the, the metal piece at the that's L, welded. You know where the L point is. The yeah. L point. It's like that. It has oh, like okay. a. So where where it connects to the pole. Right to to the. To right, the to, to the, the flat portion, pole. right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. And so she's like, "It's a rounded spatula." I was like, "All right, uh, all right, all right." I now can, it's, it's, it's I'm getting it. I'm getting it. This is radio. Good it's different, right? I was trying to trying to be as <laughs> descriptive as possible. For, <laughs> yeah, hey guys, for those that are listening in on radio, feel free to subscribe on YouTube, and you can see <laughs> what we're talking about. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, nice little shameless plug. <laughs> Where? <laughs> but again, it's it's not chopping wood. It's getting that corner and pulling it out. So. If you only have a few weeds, pull them. Now, being I've confessed of my lazy streak, mm-hmm. I'm spraying them. I'm spraying them, and I am going to use glyphosate. And there are an or there's an organic option, but the problem is, is it doesn't kill down to the root. Hmm. It doesn't kill down to the root. Um, the one that we recommend is high yields kills all. And that the way that that works is that you have to be careful, but you can go right up close to the trunks or the the base of plants. But as long as you don't get that spray on the foliage, that plant will do fine, but the weeds will die and they'll die all the way down. And you only have one spraying. There's sometimes like we'll talk about it. It's like, oh, you need to do four applications. You need to just get it to the point where it coats the leaves and then runs off. And that uh, we certainly like the high yield super concentrate because that has a surfactant in it. There's a big word, (laughs) surfactant. What that means is that it breaks down the concentration and, and when you spray it, that it dissipates over the leaf better. And that it sticks to leaves. So a lot of it's some some people call it a spreader sticker. Spreader sticker. A spreader sticker. Spreader. You use a spreader sticker. Yeah. Spreader sticker. What it does is is it takes the the droplets and makes them finer, so that it will penetrate right. and stick to that leaf rather than than roll, roll right off. off. Yeah, that makes so, sense. Uh, also, <clears throat> that there's kills all three sixty five. Why do I like that? Because that is a combination of a weed control as well as a weed preventer in the same bottle. It's available in a concentrate. It's available in an RTU. And that that's – I'm using that in my landscape oh, yeah. bed all over. Yeah, that's, um, that's a great one. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Now, if you're using the straight kills all, okay, and that if you're using that, you can, you can replant your garden next week. It's not going to affect new plantings where it's not like it's going to sit like poison in the ground right. that it's only a week. Do you have like grass seed? That's like say fast. say you have a section of your lawn that's just filled with weeds and that you spray with the kills all and then you replant your grass seed a week later. So it gives it time for it to die and then you got to get into that soil and plant your seed. The, three, the 365 is totally different. 365, it's the same active ingredient, but it has an additional ingredient that is the one that, that will be a preventer. preventer. 
and a lot of them have. I, I, I think that they're that BioAdvance has one that you'll notice that they all say 365. They're kind of copying one another. That uh, again, uh, we're high yield. I believe is the best priced uh, product, and that's by VPG, mm-hmm. um, which is Volunteer Purchasing Group. And that uh, it's again high yield is the is the brand by that company for kills all. Now there is an organic alternative alternative, and that's fertilome grass and weed killer. It's a non selective, so both of these products that that it will kill what you spray. Okay, it's not something where you can go right in your lawn and it's going to kill just the weeds. This is going to kill whatever you spray. Uh, it's fast acting, and that again, this is fertilome grass and weed killer, and it is on an organic, and it uses um, ammoniated soap of fatty acids. And the problem is, it doesn't kill down to the roots. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll see the tops die, but the root is still there. And it will come back. This is one of those things where the organic alternative, it's nice, nice. but it's not effective. Complete. But if you are 100% organic gardener, that's what you're going to do. And like, forget these things. Like, remember we had the, I think it was last year or the year before, we had a listener call and she killed her entire lawn by spraying it with vinegar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, don't try to be the mad scientist at home. It's like, well, if I had three parts vinegar and I put some vegetable oil and then I go and, you know, light it on fire, you know, just don't, just don't, just don't use this stuff, what what it's made for. You know, you're trying to do all these things on the cheap or you're trying to do these things like, you know, it's like, oh, well, I just use Epsom salts, you know, look, in what amount? Are you doing it the right way? Do you have any instructions? The guy who is from Arizona that that is, you know, putting it in his, uh, you know, his his desert garden <laughs> is going to be different, different than somebody in New Jersey or Pennsylvania or New York that is doing it in their in their garden. It's just different. Internet's a dangerous place because it doesn't always say what region of the country they're from. But you can trust us. We've got so many. We have so many videos on YouTube. Please subscribe and please on podcasts uh, gives a you, know, you can find a lot of information for over five years now that we have lots and lots of information that you can trust for the New York tri-state area, the Delaware Valley, for all basically zone, basically zone four up to zone eight. You can find information that you need. And have success. I'll tell you, I, I, again, I know I have a brand new tree that's planted. I planted a Zelkova and I planted a Franklinia tree that is starting to bud and bloom. Thank you very much. Um, that I'm planting, I'm, I have to put a new landscape bed. So I'm just going right with the, okay. the kills all. all. Yeah. I'm going to spray the bed and I'll spray the bread shape of that. I'll, I'll kill out the edge. I'll plant the landscape. Cover it up with mulch, and I'll be confident that those weeds that were there are going to die. Oh, yeah. Anything to add, Julio? No, I think you're going to do a good job with this. Thank you. Yeah. You're not going to come help pull them by hand, though. No, I'm no? not going to use that hoe. That, well, <laughs> maybe I'll get Ava to come oh, yeah. get that. Get Ava. You know, Rounded that's, spatula. That spatula. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> there you go. But honestly, um, glyphosate's gotten a lot of bad press. Yes. Uh, it's because there's a class action lawsuit and that, you know, there's a lot of, of, it's the lawyers, man. And uh, you you need to to wear gloves and you need to to be precautious and and careful. You read the instructions, damn it. I mean, (laughs) the the lawsuit has some people that were, that they were wearing a backpack that had a hole in it. And every day they'd go out and spray, but they'd get their back covered with the glyphosate. Now, uh, duh. Right. Anyway. Um, so any time that we're recommending the products to use, you need to follow the instructions. Do your homework. Read, read the label. And on that, we're going to break. 
Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Wanting to up your game in the vegetable garden? With 90 years of organic gardening experience, the Espoma Company has you covered. Espoma Organic Garden Tone is not your average garden variety fertilizer. Garden Tone is especially blended for organic vegetable gardens. Its all-natural formula contains Biotone, a blend of organic ingredients that supplies essential nutrients for strong, healthy plants and mouth-watering vegetables. Its slow-release formula provides continuous feeding. The Biotone contained in Garden Tone is a combination of organic ingredients and beneficial microbes to help roots grow deeper and faster for bigger, more bountiful harvests. Garden Tone is simple to use and safe for people, pets, and the planet. No harmful chemicals or synthetic fertilizers are ever added. You can find Garden Tone at fine garden centers. Visit Espoma.com to find a retailer near you. Garden Tone from Espoma, a natural-only garden since 1929. Last year, millions of Americans asked the internet about protecting their lawns and gardens. There's one simple answer. Bio-Advanced. Because gardeners have trusted the Blue Bottle for decades. Invasive insects? Blue Bottle. Lawn fungus? Blue Bottle. Japanese beetles? Blue Bottle. A Bio-Advanced answer for every question and guaranteed solutions for every problem. Bio-Advanced. Get more from the Blue Bottle. Bio-Advanced all-in-one rose and flower care controls insects and diseases, plus feeds. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Yes, what do you got to say, Julio? Oh, I tell you, uh, I love my my daylilies, and uh, I know a lot of you out there love them too. And it's a great time once they are, they're done flowering. It's a great time to now cut them and divide them, and you'll have even more daylilies than you've had before. That's right. When you've got those clumps, a lot of times they get compacted and they don't flower as yeah. much. And then all of a sudden, it's a They're crowded. Yeah, yeah, and and like I planted some dailies. I, I installed them with uh, my son Carl and my son-in-law Steve. Um, been talking about Melissa. Oh yeah, since the Quite beginning well. of this show. Anyway, yeah. that so they've got they have a house now and a baby. Mm-hmm. I'm a grandpa. Oh. <laughs> I've said that a lot. <laughs> I don't want to be one of those annoying grandpas, yeah, yeah. but he laughed for the first time last week. Oh, for you. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. come on. Wow. Listeners out there, isn't that the coolest thing? Like when you hear yeah. your grandchild, your first grandchild uh-huh. giggle? Yeah. That's it's wonderful. a beautiful thing. Yeah. Anyway, so we planted their landscape. Oh, you did? And that we put in dailies. Oh, wow. They were sad. Oh, they were really? sad. And, and that it's just because it's the time where they're coming off flowering they've gone through their flower cycle and they just kind of like eh you know and and some of them that we we put in were just con- really condensed root bound mm-hmm. in the pot and that can happen in the ground mm-hmm. it so does happen. how how do you how do you do it you double your you can double or triple mm-hmm. the dailies you have um and and here's how to divide them uh first of all fan of daylilies fan that's a joke because a fan of daylilies, you can see where it looks like a little fan, like yeah. where actually you'd like, use it you know, use it to, when on a hot day, yeah, to, yeah. and that it's part of the root system and that that's what you're ultimately getting to. And don't try to split it while it's in the ground and, and then pull it up. Dig out the whole clump. You're going to dig out the whole clump, pop it on the ground. You got to get rid of the soil. Get as much soil off as you can. Um, and you can be, you can do this anytime the soil is workable and it's best done right now after the daylily has finished blooming. And also, the plants need six weeks to get reestablished before winter. So now is a perfect time. So dig up the entire root clump. Remove as much soil 
as possible from the roots. You can even like dunk them. You know, you can do some waterboarding of the roots <laughs> in, the, in the bucket to get more of that soil off. And then you're going to locate the crown of the plant. The, the crown of the plant is basically where you'd say, holy, what, the, where the soil, soil meets the, the soil meets the root. root. Yeah. Right. So that's the crown. You want to be careful that you don't uh, damage the crown. So once you locate that, you're going to start from the, ad, the outer edge of the soil and you're going to break it into smaller clumps, usually about three to four plants. And each clump should have, you know, good root system and a few leaves. And again, that's where it comes where it's a fan, where where it, it literally looks like a, a fan, a handheld a fan. fan, not an electric fan, <laughs> a handheld fan where, you know, you, you're, you probably have them. You, you use them down at the Presbyterian Church down here? Or do you guys have air conditioning? We have air conditioning. Yeah, you're a rich church. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, like you see in, say, like Japanese culture where they have fans and it looks it looks like that. Mm-hmm. And it consists of just a, a few leaves. Um, you're going to gonna have a fan that probably, oh gosh, it's going to be maybe six to eight leaves, but it 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 comes from again the the root system and you can divide them and that's as far as you go. No more. No more. Look, you don't have to have to divide all the fans on your first go. I would just kind of split up the root system so you have smaller clumps. If you start there, then the next time they need to be divided, you can start with the fans. But when our growers grow them, they start right with fans. Like they're putting small little fans. sections in and then growing it from there. You want to cut the leaves back about a third. Um, they're going to be end up being like five to six inches uh, long. That's it. And then you replant them. And you're going to replant them. Uh, in the ground, you're going to use some bumper crop. You're going to make sure that you don't bury the crown, okay? We talk about the crown again. You just want them to be buried so that they're right up to that point. And that's it. You don't want to bury the crown. And, again, that's where the root system uh, meets the top of the leaves. So you don't want to go uh, too deep. And also you want to share them with friends. Oh, yeah. But sure. you got to plant them, right, Julio? Right. Plant it for them. Plant it for them. Mm-hmm. That's right. So if you're going to say, hey, I, I brought you some of my daylilies. I know that you said how pretty they were. Um, where would you like me to put them? Yeah. Bring yourself a shovel, get them in the ground, and plant them. And then every time they see them bloom or they see them grow, and daylilies are perfect because they're easy to grow, that they will say, wow, I got that from Len. Yeah. <laughs> I usually <laughs> say, right. Julio. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so. No, you do. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so get out there, divide your day, your daylilies, and you can oh, again. Yeah. It's, it's it's again. You probably you know going to be two to three times as, as many out of one. And, so. it's, and it makes a great impact when you have more. Yeah, you know, yeah. You can, just, you you can start that. doing head like yeah. basically borders, borders, yeah, things like that. Very That's nice. Great, uh, Very nice. Yeah. All right, we're going to be back in the garden after this with mosquitoes. Oh, here they come. (laughs) Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden.
We are proud to announce that Bloomers in the Garden has partnered with Renewal by Anderson of Greater Philadelphia, Delaware, South Jersey, and Southern Maryland. Renewal by Anderson is the top window and door company in the United States, specializing in replacement windows and doors. You might be thinking right now, what the heck do windows have to do with gardening? Well, Renewal by Anderson makes this beautiful garden bay window that's energy efficient and made from recycled materials. It's perfect for growing the finest indoor plants possible. When you are looking out your windows filled with plants in your beautiful garden, you don't want to see old windows that are cloudy, warped, or even rotting. That's why people in the horticulture community love Renewal by Anderson. Not only do we want our gardens to be beautiful, but their homes as well. Renewal by Anderson participates in horticultural events such as flower shows, earth days, and eco fairs. To get more information and set up a free home consultation, please visit www.philadelphiawindow.com. Dot com And be sure to tell them Bloomers in the Garden sent you. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 AM. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 1540 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Hey, welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len. He's Julio. There's Aaron. And there's Sam behind the glass keeping us under control. So we received a lot of rain after a long dry search. Mosquitoes were aggressive before the rain. I can't imagine what they're going to be like now. Did you know anything that holds water for seven days or more can produce mosquitoes? Even a, a bottle cap, right? Bottle so a bottle tiny. cap, they can produce and lay eggs and produce young from there. Tires, tires are the big deal. Like, you know, a lot of a lot of municipalities like they want to get rid of the tires because they become spots like that you can't. Like, you ever tried to empty the water from a tire? Oh, gosh, it's hard. Yeah, I mean, it's like you're rolling around, it's still <laughs> yeah. in it. You turn yeah. it on its side, it still stays it's still in good. it. You know, so bird baths, pet dishes yeah. that are left out, even even pools that, even chlorinated pools. Wow. You know, it's yeah. some things that you can do is this. You know, make sure that you've got no standing water in your buckets. Now, bird baths, Bloomer cells, a a uh, a spray that that or it's basically it's drops that you can put into your bird bath that will control the mosquitoes without hurting the birds. So that's something. Check out your local garden center for that. Your trash cans, drill holes in the bottom of your trash cans, and that that will get rid of a spot where they can go. Uh, gutters that are clogged or that have uh, a slope down, you got to clean them out and get them from, again, because they don't necessarily need like a pool standing water. They can do wet soil as well, as long as it, it stays fairly wet. Continued. All right, you ready? Here's, here's some fun facts on, uh, on mosquitoes. Uh, only females mosquitoes require a blood meal and bite animals Warm or cold blooded, and birds. Interesting. Did you know that? Yeah. So it's the ladies, <laughs> the, the lady <laughs> mosquitoes that are the ones <laughs> that are biting. Bite Male mosquitoes don't bite, oh. but they feed on the nectar of flowers and, and other, say, sugar sources that are around. So you'll see them at your hummingbird feeder too. Oh, the next one's oh. for you. The next one's for me. What <laughs> acquiring a blood meal protein essential for egg production is mostly both male and female mosquitoes are both nectar feeders for their nutrition. That one? Bigger people are often more you, attractive. You're, you're in the wrong spot, Julio. <laughs> <laughs> of the You're still with, to the other top. With again, it it's the the food that they get from basically biting animals is their first choice. Here's something. The eggs are laid at one time. So so they attach together to form like a raft and they float on the surface of the water. 
and they they can there can be as many as two hundred eggs. So all of a sudden you have one mosquito, and then that one ends up laying eggs, and you end up having two hundred. And like, what was our first? You know that quote from Matthew. Same type of thing. Seeds. As some species lay their egg on damp soil, that'll be flooded by water. Most eggs hatch larvae within 48 hours, so two days. Ugh, I wonder why I'm getting bit all over. Uh, newly emerged adults rest on the surface of the water for a short time and allow themselves to dry before they and harden before their wings harden. They, they go and they can fly away. But I think you've seen the squigglies in water that uh, those are the the babies and that if you've got a pond, hopefully your fish are helping you out and eating those, which they should be. Um, Blood feeding and mating doesn't occur for a couple of days. Wow, great. (laughs) Man, (laughs) born, get to work. (laughs) We need a bigger family. So, all right, how long do mosquitoes live? Uh, Not very long, about two weeks. That's it. Yep. Yeah, and that most of them meet a violent end. Oh, my gosh. Good. Environmental. Yeah. Well, no, violent end. Uh, Birds, dragonflies, spiders, and they they help quite a bit. Uh, Sometimes they're killed by by wind, rain, or drought. So additional fun facts that, that Julio was alluding to earlier. When you talk a lot... (laughs) <laughs> okay, <laughs> that it's the carbon uh, dioxide and lactic acid, among other chemicals, that mosquitoes are attracted to. Um, they can detect infrared radiation, so warm bodies they can they can they can sense that, sense see that, that uh, at a distance of from seventy five to one hundred foot. It's pretty close. Uh, bigger people, they're larger target. Yeah. Uh, are often more attractive to mosquitoes because they uh, produce more mosquito tracts, namely CO2 and, and lactic acid. Active or fidgety people also produce more CO2 and, and lactic acid. Julio's one here, smelly feet are attracted to certain species of mosquitoes, as is Lindberger cheese. <laughs> Dark clothing has shown to attract some species of mosquitoes more than lighter color. So if you can wear a lighter color at night, it might help you out. Um, movement increased mosquito biting up to 50% in some research tests. So freeze, don't move. <laughs> There's a mosquito around. Uh, a full moon. Oh, Increased mosquito activity five hundred percent in wow. one study. Sure. Maybe it's because they can see better. I don't. I don't know. That's interesting. That there are one hundred and seventy six species wow. of mosquitoes in the United States. Wow, that's quite a bit. The average mosquitoes. Here we go. How much is away? And get out your scale. Two point five milligrams. Wow. <sighs> Nothing. Barely. I mean, you you don't feel it when it lands on you. Yeah, you usually see it or you, you get that itch right away. Yeah. Uh, it takes about five millionths of a liter of, of blood during feeding. If I didn't get the rash, I probably wouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Mosquitoes fly an estimated one to one and a half miles per hour. Eh. Uh, slow. You ever go down the shore and yeah. like you're on the beach or, mm-hmm. you know... Salt marsh mosquitoes can migrate up to 40 miles for, for a meal. Wow. <laughs> uh, That's all right. So we've established we don't like mosquitoes. <laughs> I don't like mosquitoes. Here are some control options. Did you, did you ever, did you have the fog truck, the mosquito fog truck that oh, would come yeah. by in the neighborhoods? Uh-huh. Yeah. Aaron, North Jersey always had them. Up north, not where I'm at now, though. No, oh, no, no. I kind of leave that up to us. Yeah, <laughs> to do. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so what it would do is, it, is it would be a, a fogging that helps. And Bonnet has something called Fog RX, and it's a line of thermal foggers. Uh, and that what you do is you use it in conjunction with mosquito beater insect fog spray, and you put it in this machine. And what it does is, is it makes it like a smoke machine. If you ever seen have seen that. And it can work into cracks and crevices and into plants and and be able to get those mosquito populations down. Uh, it's safe for people, plants, pets, livestock, mm. and it doesn't leave uh, without. It doesn't leave much of a of residue. 
There's a Bondi Mosquito Beater, which is quick and easy to apply, ready to use, no mixing, no water. Uh, there's a granule with that same name. And here in studio, Julio, right in front of you, uh, if you're looking on YouTube, please subscribe. And that there is an aerosol fogger that is Mosquito Beater, that that works very well. If you're going to have a party or something, you know, go ahead and spray that about 20 minutes before your guests arrive and that that will reduce the mosquito population. A lot of the repellents, um, like for instance, a ready-to-spray repellent mosquito beater has geranium oil, cedar oil, lemongrass oil. It's it's all organic. Citronella oil, we all know about that. Uh, if, and it repels for up to three weeks. It, it is, you know, we talked about the, um, in a, a bird bath that you can use a mosquito beater. Uh, it's a, actually, it's a water soluble pouch that you can, and it, and it dissolves in water. And the, and the granules, it's BT, uh, Bactylus thuringiensis. It's a, it will mess up with the digestion system of the mosquito. And before they, uh, become breeding, biting adults, including those which carry the West Nile virus, encephalitis, and equine encephalitis. So what does that mean? That means that while there's still those squiggly things in the in the water, that it wipes them out before they get a chance to, to come to adults. I like that idea. One pouch will treat 50 square foot of water. So perfect for ponds and fountains, things like that. Uh, anything that's stagnant. Um, it, it, it stagnant, non-moving water it works in. It is um, frustrating when you have a party and it has to move indoors at night because there are so many mosquitoes. Yeah. Using the mosquito beater product is a great way to protect your guests from getting bit. Uh, I would use a combination of the granular because that – the mosquitoes that haven't launched from the area, meaning they they ha- they aren't flying yet because it isn't dark enough or isn't the conditions for them, and that where you you go and use a combination of the granule down across the area, and then also use the fogger for any of those that are um, on on the wing, as they say. Uh, one other thing is that uh, if any of you are afraid of bats or are freaked out by seeing bats flying around, uh, they are helping you. They are your friends. The, the bats are, they will eat mosquitoes. I mean, they, they, I mean, there's a calculation, which I don't have in front of me, of how many mosquitoes they eat by weight each evening. So when you, if you have bats around, don't think that it's a bad thing. It's a good thing because they're reducing that mosquito population. Uh, Julio, yeah. itchy yet? I'm yeah, oh, feeling yeah. a little itchy. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel I like I'm bit by mosquitoes yeah. just talking about it. Talk to, yeah, yeah. Anything to add? No, no. It's uh, it's that time of year, you know? It's that, it is. Yeah. It is that time of year. And a, and a lot of times that that there was a, a trap that they had, but it was too expensive, that it was based on propane and that where you turned the propane on and it was lit and that it was the attractant of the propane being lit that it was cr- – creating the CO2 that would draw the mosquitoes into the trap. Wow. Got the wrong idea. About what, huh? <laughs> I thought you guys were going to cook the mosquitoes. You're talking about well, propane. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but what it would do, it's, it was all about the CO2 yeah, because gotcha. they're attracted. So, yeah. so if, if, you know, usually if, if say, if the, like somebody's doing, you know, a lot of talking, mm-hmm. they're the ones getting bit. Yeah. Because they're attracted, that CO2 right. that's coming, coming out. out of this veil. <laughs> so anyway, some interesting facts. About. Mosquito beater, babana, yeah. it's, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's a way to go. You would see uh, on the bike trail a lot of mosquitoes following cyclists. Yeah. Big ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Ex- and, exhalations. And again, the, considering yeah. like movement, yep. what they're wearing, yep. and then also that they're, you know, they're puffing. Yeah. Big mosquitoes. <laughs> I've never seen these size mosquitoes yeah. before. Yeah. Wow. Well, remember, males are, are usually bigger. Okay. And they don't bite. Oh, okay. So, anyway. All right. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. 
Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Do you remember seeing that light green grass growing high in your yard late last June? Well, that was nutsedge grass. It always had a lighter green color and it always grew faster than the rest of the lawn. And you'd find it in other places like along the sidewalk. It is the worst weed in the world. It's hard to get rid of. And what you need to use is Fertilome's Weed Out Nutsedge Control. It will control both yellow and purple nutsedge plus over 50 broadleaf weeds such as dandelions, clover, chickweed, and ground ivy. Fertilome's Weed Out Nut Sedge Control gets absorbed by the roots and the leaves, and within days, the sedges are gone. You may even reseed after four weeks of spraying the nut sedge. So when you start seeing those light green glass braids growing in your yard, make sure you purchase Fertilome's Weed Out Nut Sedge Control to kill any nut sedge threatening to invade your nice green lawn. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomer's YouTube channel. Bloomer's in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 a.m. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomer's in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 12.50 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, you know, the, the cooler temperatures and lower humidity are in the fall will produce some of the best-looking roses of the year. So now we're going to let you know a little bit about what to do at this time. That's right. They say that for roses, it's like the second spring for yeah. the fall. So first of all, make sure you're pruning. Yeah, number one. Clean that air space out between the branches. And, you know, one rule of thumb is always go to the fifth leaf. Uh, where and before you prune, but you can prune a little bit harder this time. Sometimes your roses can get a little bit out of control, and a good pruning will help clean them up. Will will help you get rid of any of that black spot that you maybe have reoccurring black spot because there's not enough air circulation. But like Julio said, the lower humidity is going to help that as well. So make sure you're pruning and make sure bef- you clean your pruners before. Every cut. So not, um, let me back up. Clean your pruners before you go on to the next plant is what I'm trying to say. So you get done with it. And what do you do with your pruner, Julio? I put a little bit of the, I take a bucket and I put a little bit of water in there with bleach. Not much bleach, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And and that, that'll killing, kill any of the the diseases that you don't want to spread anything like even unfortunately, maybe you, you say you've got one rose. Oh, no, look, it's got rose rosette. And you go and you prune there, and then you go to the next one, you're spreading it. So you want to make sure that you're cleaning those pruners. Mm-hmm. Rake up the leaves. Oh, yeah, sure. Don't don't skimp. Wake up those leaves because those leaves have the spores from different diseases. So you want to make sure you get rid of them and put them in the trash. Uh, I don't. I don't even like putting them in the compost pile. Just, yeah. just put them in. In the hopefully your town does uh, recycling. Yeah, you, know, you can put them in that. Make sure you're spraying. If you're not done, and I don't care if you have. Oh, I have knockout roses. That doesn't matter. Yeah. You need to control the the mites that uh, are spreading Spirit. the. Uh, rose rosette. You need to control all other types of insects uh, and, and, that, and diseases. And you can do that with either a spray 
uh, or a granular. And there are contact sprays, which you have to do all the time, nonstop. With the systemics, they're going to last a, a lot longer, but they're going to take a lot longer to work. So if you use a contact rose spray, it'll work right away, but it's not going to last as long. So I honestly, for that first spray, I like using a combination where you can use a granular uh, drench or, or let's not, it's not confusing. New Jersey imidacloprid has been eliminated. Pennsylvania, I'm not sure about New York. You still can use it, but again, it's an unfortunate thing because <laughs> we love it. We still love it. It's a great product. Uh, and then, again, fertilize. You're going to use rose tone from a spoma. And for a water-soluble fertilizer, um, I know everybody loves miracle Grow or says miracle Grow's is great. But uh, honestly, Jack's Classic is much better. A 2020-20 analysis is excellent. And this fall, your roses will look terrific. It's not it, it's amazing that your roses in October will look as great as they did in May. So just get this cleaned up, get them, get them ready because they're going to push out and that the, the amount of blooms that you're going to get is going to be terrific. Anything to add, Julio Zamora? I hit it all. I hit it all? Yeah. I hit it all. <laughs> we'll be park. back in the garden <laughs> right after this. is here and people have a lot of questions about weed and feed there's one simple answer bio advanced five-in-one weed and feed just one application kills lawn weeds and prevents new weeds and crabgrass up to six months and if crabgrass is already growing it kills that too plus five-in-one feeds and greens your lawn bio advanced five-in-one weed and feed get more from the blue bag Here's the dirt on potting mixes. They're not all created equal. A Spoma organic potting mix gives roots the ideal balance of air and moisture. It contains a special blend of beneficial mycorrhiza to help grow stronger roots, bigger plants, and more bountiful blooms. Try a Spoma organic potting mix indoors and out for all your potted flowers, vegetables, and you'll see why it's the best. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you. Organic potting mix from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I don't know about you, but ants are driving me insane. But I think I got them. I got them. I think I got them. That's a song from some uh, musical. (laughs) Anyway, that they come and all of a sudden they come from nowhere. It's like, where do they come from? All of a sudden, they're they're like all over your counter. It's, it's like they're having a party, and, and they all their brothers and you know cousins from around the world are there. What you need to do, it's quite simple. Combination of bait, which is right here, safe. It's borax. What they do is they go and they eat it, and then they go and send it and feed their other brothers and then they're hopefully you're trying to get it to the queen so they're taking that food source and that it just messes with their their stomach and that they end up dying it takes time it takes time but you want to use a combination of liquid ant bait and dun, 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 complete ant killer or insect killer for me it's complete ant killer works tremendous Okay, it works. There's a wide, it, everything from ants to roaches and that it has a great residual. But what you got to do is make sure you get it towards the cracks. Okay, any surfaces, it'll kill flies, It'll, but you don't have to go around shooting the flies. What it will do is that if you put it, say, on a windowsill, like I can't believe, like I, I put it on a windowsill months ago and, and that I'm finding dead flies, dead stink bugs. Wow. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah no. Um, it'll can, and, and that they, they just, it will last longer than anything else. Like, again, it's complete insect killer by BioAdvance. Um, I used a little, it's a, a, a dust, which I was not as successful with, but this has been terrific. And you got to remember, it's like, all right, well, it, the ones you see are scouts. 
And they're going out and they're saying, all right, you know, we're a hive. We're a great big team. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to find where the food source is. And they're like, like Hansel and Gretel or that Hansel and Gretel did the breadcrumbs, right? I don't know. Oh, come on. <laughs> anyway, so the ants leave a for- pheromone trail. So saying like, all right, this is where, you know, I got the grape jelly that you dropped on the on the counter. And then they go back to the hive and they tell, yeah, you know, that pheromone else. trail leads them right to that grape jelly. Yeah. Um, you know, they're out scouting, looking for food sources to feed the eggs that the queen is laying. And the whole trick is getting rid of the queen and that. By doing the bait, it gets rid of the queen in time, but where this will get rid of those scout ants, and as they come across it, it has a great residual, and it's a thrin, it's a a flutherin, where that is one of the ones, delta methrin is also a good one, but I like the flutherin just simply because it can kill in seconds and lasts up to 12 months, and this is on non-porous surfaces like not not something like that will um that will get wiped off if, if it's wiped off it's gone but if you have it like i was saying on my windowsill things like that it lasts for up to 12 months all the cracks and crevices that are you know you know where they are they're like in between behind your backsplash or in between the the, the say the stove or someplace where those ants are coming from they don't just come and appear they're coming from somewhere deep in could they could be in you've got some wet wood or you've got something else going on but you got to spray the complete insect killer by bioadvance is the one to use works great but if it's not going to kill the queen unless you use the liquid right. ant bait and that's what you need to do get those insects out of your home out of your home and it also works outdoors <laughs> As a perimeter spray. So if you spray outdoors, you're going to stop those insects from getting in. So you're going to use it in the spring too. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Well, we are out of time. Oh, goodness. Thank you for you. listening today. Please, yep. you know, if you want to hear us, go on our podcast and call the hotline if you've got questions. We'll be the same time next week. We'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden. <laughs>